Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a functional equation. We have f of x times f of 1 over 1 minus x equals 1 minus x over x. And we're going to be looking for values of f of x. So I'm going to be using a lot of substitution here. So let's go ahead and number our equations, starting with this one. Let's go ahead and call this equation number one. Now I'm going to replace x with 1 over 1 minus x. And it kind of makes sense, right? Because we have f of 1 over 1 minus x. So if you replace x with 1 over 1 minus x, you're going to be getting something that we already have. So let's see what happens. I'm going to get from here f of 1 over 1 minus x. And now I need to replace this x with 1 over 1 minus x. Somewhere else, let's go ahead and find out what happens when I do that. So if I replace x with 1 over 1 minus x, and I'm doing it inside 1 over 1 minus x, so kind of like a composing a function with itself, it's going to give me something like this, 1 over 1 minus 1 over 1 minus x. If you make a common denominator, you get 1 over 1 minus x minus 1 over 1 minus x. The ones are going to cancel out. You're going to get negative x over 1 minus x, but it's 1 over something. So that's going to be reverted or inverted, whatever. And that's going to be 1 minus x divided by negative x. But if you negate both the top and the bottom, we're going to get the following. To keep a long story short, this gives us x minus 1 over x. So this expression right here, the second f, is going to be f of x minus 1 over x. And of course, we have to do it here too. And there are two places, so we have to do it. Let's go ahead and do it here too, so our expression doesn't get very messy. I'm going to replace x with 1 over 1 minus x, both in the numerator and the denominator, like this. And if you make a common denominator like before, you're going to get 1 minus x minus 1, which is negative x over 1 minus x. And the bottom one is 1 over 1 minus x. So the one, when the 1 minus x cancels out, we're going to end up with negative x. Great. So this is fairly simple. And let's call this equation number 2. Later on, we're going to put these together. So the second thing I'm going to do in terms of substitution is replacing x. Again, this is always done in the original equation, so I'm not using the second equation again. Uh, replace x with x minus 1 over x. And that kind of depends on the result that we got for the second equation. If you look at the second equation, we got a new thing for f. f of x minus 1 over x. So it makes sense if I replace x with x minus 1 over x in the original equation. All right, so here's our original equation in yellow. Let's go ahead and replace x with x minus 1 over x. So this is what it's going to look like. But again, we have 1 over 1 minus x. So let me go ahead and copy that here so it's easier. Like this. This is my original. So I can kind of scroll down. Here we go. Now we're going to replace x with x minus 1 over x. So f of x is easy. We can re easily do that. So it's going to be f of x minus 1 over x. But the second part is not that easy and the, the result. So let's go ahead and do those. Uh, in 1 over 1 minus x, if you replace x with x minus 1 over x right here, and we're going to do it here and here, three places. But let's do the first one first. This is going to give us, uh, after making a common denominator again, you're going to get x minus x plus 1 over x. x cancels out. We get 1 over 1 over x, which is x. So this is fairly simple. This one gave us f of x, which is cool. But the other one is 1 minus x over x, but we're replacing x with x minus 1 over x. So it's going to be 1 minus x minus 1 over x divided by x minus 1 over x. Again, we're replacing x with x minus 1 over x here. That's what we get. All right, so we're going to simplify this now. The reason why we're replacing x with x minus 1 over x is because from the second equation, we got f of x minus 1 over x. So we want to get that again. Great. So let's go ahead and simplify this. And then we're going to uh, put that on the right hand side. Remember, this is where this x comes from. So we're going to make a common denominator again. That's going to give us x minus x plus 1 over x divided by x minus 1 over x. The x are going to cancel out. It's going to 1 over x. But the x's are also going to cancel out here when we flip and multiply. From here, we get 1 over x minus 1. Awesome. So we're going to call this equation number 3. So in order to make it a little easier for you guys, uh, I'm going to go ahead and rewrite all these equations, 1, 2, and 3. And then I'll tell you how to work it out. We're going to have a system with three variables, which is easy to solve. You'll see in a little bit. And then after we solve this uh, system, uh, we're going to kind of branch off and 
I'll tell you what's going on. So pretty interesting results. So let's go ahead and rewrite these equations. So my first equation was the original one, f of x times f of one over one minus x equals one minus x over x. My second equation, after replacing x with one over one minus x, it became f of one over one minus x. So from here, you can tell what x was replaced with. Uh, I got f of one over one minus x multiplied by f of x, and it just became, actually, no, that's not f of x. I messed up. So in the second equation, f of, uh, let's see, we replace x with one over one minus x, so we got f of one over one minus x times f of x minus one over x. Here we go, that's what we got. And on the right hand side, we got negative x. And on the third equation, we replace x with x minus one over x, which is this one. And that gave us in the original equation, of course, f of x minus one over x multiplied by f of x, this time we got the x equals one over x minus one. So that's my third equation. So we got three equations, and this is a system, and there are three variables, but notice that each equation contains a product. So kind of like a two-way product, right? And if you multiply all of these equations, so I kind of have something like this. I can maybe give you a, a similar uh, system. Kind of like, let's say A, B, C, R are variables, and K, L, M are constants. Uh, a, B equals K, A, C equals M, and B, C equals L, something like that, right? And obviously it would make sense if you multiply these together because that would give us A squared, B squared, C squared, and then I could square root it. That's the whole idea, make sense? Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and multiply these equations. When we do, we're gonna get f of x times f of x, which is f of x squared, but let's save the square uh, around the bracket. So we're gonna get f of x multiplied by, we're getting f of one over one minus x twice, just like the other one. So we're gonna square that at the end. And now we're getting the f of x minus one over x, and all of those are being squared. So let's go ahead and use brackets here and set it equal to what? Something on the right hand side, right? So we're gonna multiply these now. Okay, I was like, what? The result is, we don't know what it, okay. We're gonna multiply these together and see what we get from the right hand side. On the right hand side, we kind of get an expression for x and now we have everything, um, each of these uh, different functions, right? I mean the f of whatever. So notice that one minus x, one minus x cancels out. We end up with negative x over x. As long as x does not equal zero, we can safely say that this is equal to um, negative one, right? And I think we made a mistake here, there we go. Okay, it's not one over one minus x, it's supposed to be one over x minus one, here we go. I knew I wasn't, I wasn't gonna get a negative there. Okay, when we s distribute, okay, when we cancel these out, the negative also canceled out, therefore we got a positive one from the right hand side. Okay, great. So I'm not gonna edit this so you guys get to see the mistake that I made and then how I fix it. Okay, anyway, so as a result, we get this whole thing equals, I mean, of course, squared equals one. Now this is significant because we got a real simple result on the right-hand side, but let's go ahead and uh, look at two cases here. Why two cases? Because something squared equals one, that means it can be one or negative one. So suppose, suppose we have the product equal to a positive one. Let's get the positive case first. Always positive first, right? So suppose this equals one. Now, how can I solve for f of x from here? There's a very easy way to do it, and it comes from the original equations. Take a look at one, two, three. The second equation, the second equation, contains f of one over one minus x and f of x minus one over x. So it doesn't have f of x. So that would make sense if I replace that product with negative x, wouldn't it? So this is equal to negative x, and this is awesome. Don't you think so? So from here we get f of x equals negative one over x, which is really cool, and by the way, you can check it. And what if this product is equal to, what if this product is equal to negative one? And I'm pretty sure you already know the answer, because if this is negative x, then f of x needs to be one over x. Let me go ahead and write that here, and that is going to be all the solutions. Now, you can go ahead and check it. I'm not going to do it. Uh, you can definitely do it, and that's going to, that should check. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.